Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. This is the girl Donna here at Isla Casiola. So this is part two of making some bookmarks. Uh, decoupage style. So I had started decoupaging my um, calendar or almanac as we call it here in Trinidad. And I showed you what it looked like. That's like in a regular almanac. And the other side of it is plain white. So I finished decoupage on this side and you see that I used some magazine pages. I tore up some pieces from a uh, white paper doily. I used some burlap. As if you can see here, I used some burlap. And just, I put in some words. I used some newspaper. Just some fun stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go ahead and decoupage the back side of it. I hope you can see it here. Don't worry about this hole because I'm going to cover it up. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. Sorry for that noise. So what I'm going to be using to do that today, I have some music paper. I also have some pages from an old book, which I really like how these look. And we're going to go ahead and decoupage this side. And then I'm going to show you how I embellish it with some other little fun things. And again, optional. Feel free to use whatever you have at your house. Don't run out to get anything. Maybe you have children in school and they have all music books that they haven't finished. And they're never going to use again. You know, in this class, by the time they need it again in another class, they'll ask you to buy a new one. So go ahead and get those pages out. I study music and I have a long time ago. And so I have a lot of music books. This particular one, I have two in them, two in it. So I don't feel guilty, you know, using one for the sake of my craft. So I'm just going to go ahead as this taking off the border because I don't want too much of that um, edge where there's really, it's just plain. So I just went ahead and ripped these up. And I'm not going to do this side um, with small pieces of paper as I did the other one. This one I'm going to do bigger pieces. So I'm still using this glue here. I was looking for my other glues and it's funny because I put all of them in a container. When I find that container, I will let you know. But I have this one and it works. It's it's pretty good. And this is the Elmer's Extreme glue stick for bigger, tougher pro product projects. Sorry. And um, this is what I'm using. I've used it before, so I know that it does get the job done. So I'm just going to go around the edges first, making sure you go around the edges because you want the edges to stick, but you also want, I'm sorry if the camera shakes a little, the table is not really steady. I think I need to put some paper underneath the legs so it wouldn't shake too much. So I'll do that in a sec, but we want to make sure the whole page is completely covered because remember, when we make these bookmarks, we're going to be cutting this um calendar into pieces and so we want to make sure that all the pieces that we put on here um, is completely stuck onto this paper. Don't worry if it overlaps that's perfectly fine because we can always trim that down afterwards. And let me see what I can do to um, prevent this table from rocking too much. I do not want to make you nauseous. One big second, I'm still with you. Let's see. Well, a little better. Still a little shaky, but bear with me. Bear with me. All right. So I finally made it today. Yesterday I was in my room, in my bedroom, and it's afternoon now. I'm an in, and I am in my craft room. I have a little table here, and. It's not really perfect, but it does get the job done. 
So, yeah, I am thinking of having someone build me a craft table eventually so I can keep like all my, or most of my craft stuff like in drawers and stuff like that. Something fancy-ish, but not expensive. Uh, we'll see. I'll let you in on that if and when it happens. So I'm just going to um, go ahead, lay down another page, making sure that I glue it really, really good. And yes, it takes up a lot of glue, stick, but that's fine because that is something I, I'm not running on low of is glue. Even if my glue stick runs out, I have um, double-sided tape, um, the white Elmer's glue. I gave some to one of my, my younger brother the other day um, so that my nieces and nephew can, my niece and nephews could um, do some crafting. And I also give him some toilet paper roll, which is another thing I have like hundreds of literally I have so many and what I do with them is I use them for different crafting and if I didn't mention it before I mention it now and if I did I mention it again what I'm doing what I would like to do is a series of different ways to make bookmarks and I say series because um, I know that school is out and I know that the children are home and some parents are home with their children working at from home. And I just figured this would be a fun way to give the children something to do while you work. They don't need much supervision. Sorry about that, especially the older ones. Um, you just give them, just take this one away. You can give them a craft scissors or no scissors at all. They can just rip, tear, and glue down. Just lay down some newspaper or an old tablecloth or something. And um, on the table, you don't want your table to get dirty. Or you could have them sit on the floor, on a mat, something. Just secure whatever area you want allow them to use. And have them go to town. You know, glue stick is best for, for kids because... You don't have to worry about glue falling anywhere else. Um, but yeah, if you're there and you're supervising them, by all means, use any type of glue or double-sided tape that you wish to use. I have, uh, I forgot the name of some of the glue, but I have a nice liquid one. And whenever I find it, and I find my stuff, I will... If it's something you'd be interested in, I will be happy to show you um, my stash of the different types of, of glue that I have right now. It may change, you know, whenever I see glue on sale, I jump at the opportunity or if not even on, on sale, but at a good price, I will jump at the opportunity to go ahead and um, purchase it and secure it for when I need to use it. When I went on vacation last year, I went to um, my nephew's wedding in Georgia and went to the dollar store, Dollar Tree and Dollar General and they had all these like really nice glue that is pretty pricey in Trinidad and I bought some but you would be amazed how quickly a suitcase gets heavy and overweight so I had to leave most of my glue I think I came with like one bottle because I had other things that I wanted to bring and I had to choose, I had to make a choice. Yes, I had more important things to bring and so I ended up leaving back most of my glue in a suitcase packed 
with some other stuff that one day will make it to Trinidad. And if it does, well, yes. Even if I have to go and get it myself, this virus thing is not going to last forever. Just have to wait it out and do the right thing. Those of us who are asked to stay at home, don't feel that, oh my gosh, I'm staying at home and I'm so bored. Think of it as me staying at home saves so many lives, right? Because you may not have it. You may have it. And as the Minister of Health here in Trinidad said, if you act as if everyone has it and be cautious and be, be preventative, do preventative measures, then it would definitely um, go, it would definitely ease up on um, what I was going to say. Yeah, it will definitely go a long way in terms of preventing um, the spread of the virus. So if you think of it this that way, you know, think of yourself as a necessity, saving lives. Don't just tell yourself, well, only doctors and nurses and police officers. We who are staying at home, in my mind, are also important. Are we just as important? I say yes, because we are sacrificing. We are making sacrifices by staying home. Because me personally, whenever I take vacation, I travel. I don't take vacation and stay home. And so while some people may call me up and be like, how are you enjoying your little mini vacation? I'm not on enjoy I'm not on a vacation. I am not on vacation. I am waiting out of this process of life, this virus. I'm waiting it out. And I've been asked to stay at home. And I am happy to do my part. And don't get me wrong. I am very happy to be home. I am happy to not have to get up in the morning and rush out so very, very early. For those who know me, know how early I have to get up bright and early in the morning and travel very far. Um, takes a couple of hours to get to work. So I am happy not to have to do that at this moment. But as I said, when I take vacation, I like to travel. I even joked with my parents and said to them, I call I call us the three musketeers as we travel together. So I even joked with them saying, you know, before we had the shutdown of the airport and all that, you know, and things got even more serious in Trinidad because it's been serious in other parts of the world. I even jokingly said to them and my sister who lives in Georgia, you know, we should my parents and I come to Georgia. And if we got if we get stuck in Georgia, um, we wait on the virus day. She has a big, beautiful backyard, you know, and even if we can go out to the stores and shop, the atmosphere is just so different there, you know. So I said that to her and we joked and laughed about it. And then I was like, like I said it, like, and like in about a week after, we had the lockdown and I was like, man see we could have been there but i am glad to be home i am grateful for my home so i'm not downplaying that part in any way i am very grateful for my home that heavenly father is blessed with i am grateful to be spending time with my parents waiting out the storm i call it you know and we are all Christians, we all go to church and, you know, we all pray and stuff. And so church was us on Sundays and we haven't been able to go and we miss it a lot. I remember when the, we were told by the Minister of Health, by our government, that um, we can um, still, even though churches and stuff were closed, we can still gather in groups of 10. And my dad, who is the deacon of his church, was still happy because he went, I think, one Sunday. 
and it was just 10 of them and he's like we could do this this could work you know if we make up a list and 10 people come this sunday and then a different 10 well nine including the pastor so you know we can do this and then they came and they said five and he's like you know him and the pastor and all the important people who made decisions in the, in the church decided you know let's just go by the law of the land which is what we have told to do even in the bible so they didn't have it anymore don't have service anymore um so that is a bit of a um you know what can I say? Something that you look forward to, but as my dad said even today, um, you don't have to have a um, church as a building and we can have service anyway. And so what we've been doing, the three of us, is we've been having service every night, well this week at least, at the, the, um, Easter and the Holy Week, we've had service every night and that was really nice. I slept really well, better than I've slept. I felt a little more relaxed, less tension, and I did enjoy that very much. Um, yeah, so while I was telling my story, you saw how I laid down. I want to put a piece here. Um, making sure I always go back. Hope you can see that. Right. Let me put it on this side so I can show you. Yeah, it's a little raised up, so I always go back and like raise it up a little to make sure that it's perfect, it's glued down properly. And in this case, if it's not, I make sure I go back and add an OPS amount of glue and then I glue right around it as well, just for that added protection. Um, if you want, you could decoupage it. The reason I'm not decoupaging it because we're under lockdown and hoping that it ends soon, having faith that it will, but um, I'm rationing my car supplies almost like I'm rationing food. Well, it hasn't gotten to the point where I have to ration food as yet, but it might get to that point, you know. Um, anyway, enough about that know that everybody is doing i'm hoping that everybody is doing the best that they can don't feel that you know they don't just go on board so i'm going outside think of staying inside and saving lives so i'm just gonna add a few more of this music sheet i also have if i can find it um i have some paper here which is from the shorthand old shorthand book I used to do shorthand like many moons ago. What I did here with this piece for some texture, I just run it through my sewing machine without any tread. Um, I do that also like when I would cut out my bookmarks, like individually, sometimes I would run it through the machine. I just say this is the bookmark. I would just sew right around this way, this way, this way, this way, without the tread and make like a zigzag stitch. Or sometimes I do it with the thread as well. And when I do that, like in another series, I will show you how I do that. So as I was saying, again, I'm going to have a series of different ways to make bookmarks with stuff that you may have already have around the house. So this is just the first, the first series or the first way I'm showing you in the series. So I have a couple more ideas for you using up your same scrap and stuff like that and um, some other things you might have around the house stickers buttons lace tread whatever you may have around the house liquor sticks um, just pom-poms whatever you may have um, yarn different types of string and I'm going to show you how we could implement all those things that you already have at home to have your children make bookmarks. You can say to them, you know, how about we make some bookmarks today for your teachers so that when school reopen, you know, you can give it to them and let them know that you missed them and that you were thinking about them during the time that you were at home, you know? 
They would, I'm sure they'd be happy to do that. Oh, let's make some bookmarks for our grandparents, your grandparents, or your aunts and uncles, or your other cousins. You know, so when we see them again, we can give it to them and let them know that we missed to them. And something fun for them to do. And, you know, help them to be creative. Get out their paints and all that good stuff. Get out their coloring books. Uh, all that good stuff they can do. They can just don't have them just sit in front of the television watching cartoon the whole time. Even though I know for some of you it would be the easier thing to do and I'm not judging because um you know if you're working at home and like um one of my relatives who's working at home and the children are at home all the time and her husband is a necessity worker so he has to go to work so she's home with the children and she has actually been timed like she has to sign in every couple of hours um show what she's done and has eight hours of work to put in with an hour break it's very tough because she has to use that hour to make food for the children to prepare lunch and then find things for them to do to keep them quiet while she work on the computer so I mean it's not all that easy you know especially people who have children and who have to work at home let me show you another little section here look at that it's completely dry and we don't have to worry about it and even when we cut start cutting these down into the sizes that we want to make our bookmark if we see any lifting we can totally go ahead and add some glue like it's never you can, it's not like oh my gosh it's too late i can't add glue you can always go back and add glue um with the glue stick you will find that you'll miss some spots as opposed to if you had wet glue because usually what i would do if i have my white elmer's glue i would add some water to it and mix it up and use my sponge brush and brush a section so you can see that it's actually saturated but as i said this is a really strong glue and all you have to do is just go ahead and um if you miss a spot feel free to just go ahead and um you know put some glue there so i'm just going ahead and adding some of that shorthand paper which is the same color as the um sort of a ivory color and you notice this one here is a little more it's not bright white but it's sort of a light ivory color so what i may do i may take some um shoe polish because i i am a frugal person when it comes to crafting so i don't have like a million stamps and um stamping pile and all that what i do is i buy and i'll show you it when i i didn't bring it up to my craft room i think it's downstairs i just buy shoe regular shoe polish um with the sponge applicator and i use that to do all my um aging to make my edges look a little aged and a little antique and all that stuff i yeah i don't own a lot of stamps and i can afford a lot of stamps and i just don't believe in like wasting money if you could afford it by all means but in trinidad it's pretty pricey and so yeah craft for me when i'm crafting i look for like the cheapest way to craft like all my ribbon collections and stuff like that is stuff that i got from my sister in georgia when she gets things like really on sale and she saves me stuff and when she's coming on vacation or if i'm going to visit yeah i have she have them there for me that's how we roll so this is what it's looking like so far I'm loving it I'm absolutely loving it so all you do is 
um, once you're done like see on this side here has a little bit of lifting as well so i'm gonna go ahead and glue that down don't be afraid even if it gets a little bit of paper it's just gonna glide back down easy peasy so there we go so what i was gonna say is um if you have any pieces like hanging off the side like this you can just go ahead and cut it down so don't have to worry about that what i want to do quickly is show you how i'm going to add some more decoration to this side here using some glitter that i usually use some of this glitter that i usually use when i am doing my nail art but i have so much of it i use it for other crafts as well this one here i love 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 i call it my magic glitter because it depends on whatever color you have underneath especially when you're doing nails um will determine what color this changes into like when i did and i'll show you when i do um another nail video somewhere in the future as you can see my nails are being because i'm home and i wanted to give it a little rest it's so i think it's coming along nicely so I'm um, going to uh, have some old glue some glue stuff there but yeah um, when I do black nail polish and then I put this on on top of it it turns green like green with glitter it's amazing so different colors you get different it's just I call it my magic glitter I love it so yeah there it is. When you look at it from here, it has like a little bit of a tint of pink, some green, and some white and other colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some. I'm just going to, um, using my glue here, just finding a section. Like, I know I want to put a little bit on some of the glue up. And I'm not covering the whole thing in glitter. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you how I apply it, just to make sure I don't get too much. It's just a, as an accent, um, making sure my hands are not sticky. I just pin, take a little bit, a little pinch, and high above the sky, raise my hand above it, and um, just sprinkle. Pick, pick up a little bit more. Holy smokes, almost lost my camera there. <laughs> I'm back. So just adding a little. I hope you can see it. Um, can I zoom you in? I'm going to zoom you in. And let you see. So wherever there's glue, it's going to stick. And where there's no glue, once I shake it, it's, um, it's going to fall away. And I'm going to scoop it up. So that's that one. Let me see if so I can zoom in so you can see how pretty it looks. Hold on. I'm afraid to move the camera. Maybe I can move the paper instead. See how shimmery that looks? Absolutely beautiful. And I'm just knocking it shake some of it off it's absolutely beautiful it's not too much just a little bit, bit of glitter on that side i also have this one which is a rose gold and i'm gonna add some of that on the other side so i'm gonna flip it over on this side and if you don't have glitter i think it looks beautiful just the way it is I just because I have it I figure why not make it a little more fancy right you can you don't I know like some people might say oh my gosh you're ruining it you're going overboard there's no such thing as ruining it because I'm creating art and art is in my imagination and it's the beauty that lies in art is what I as an artist what I see and hopefully other people see 
the beauty in it as I create it. So I am going to go ahead and put some more, some of this rose gold here. Again, very sparingly. I'm just going to sprinkle some. I like how it looks so far. Absolutely beautiful. And I also have some chunky hexagon glitter in blue, like an indigo blue and a nice green. And I'm thinking I'm going to add some of that as well. Let me just knock off some of the loose glitter that I have on here. It's so shimmery and so beautiful. So I have that. Make sure you can see it. Yeah. And I'm just the glue is still wet. And I'm just gonna pour some in my hand here. I, I don't need a lot, like literally just a few. Like that's more than enough. Right there. And just again from high up randomly for putting them down but these because they're chunky i am going to have to kind of press it in with my hand to make sure it sticks and i like how it looks i like how it looks it's looking good and as i said again i'm just a little goes a long way you don't have to put a lot i raise my hand up maybe about four or five inches high so you get more of a random throw and then i just take the palm of my hand you can take a book if you a page if you want, like so, and just gently press in the thick chunky glitter and have two pages. And not all that I throw on is gonna stick. Some will stick, some may not stick, because they may not glue be glue. I didn't glue the entire um, surface, so that's fine with me. Um, I don't need the whole page.